Hi all, let's continue looking at the amazing Stockfish versus Leela Tisek super final match. Uh, so in game 43, Stockfish was playing white and the opening book given e4, e5, we have the two knights defense here. So black getting out these two knights, two knight defense, knight g5, d5, e takes. And now it's thought to be a risky move to play knight takes d5, but just for fun, this was the opening book forced on both engines. As long as as long as it's in a pair of games, it doesn't matter really uh, how dodgy an opening is. Uh, more usual is knight a5 in this position, where black gets what's thought to be sufficient compensation, uh, an even position here. But knight takes d5, thought to be a little bit shaky, and the most solid move is d4 known as the lolly attack. Uh, lolly was actually uh, Giam Battist, Giam Lolly. Uh, he was born in uh, 1698. He was an Italian chess player, one of the most important chess theoretician, uh, theoreticians of his time. Uh, and he had this book called, well, the English translation, Theoretical Practical Views on the Game of Chess published in 1763 in Bologna. So um, so the lolly attack named after him, d4. The fried liver is also pretty dangerous, but it's not conclusive. Uh, so bringing the king out, it's a lot of fun. And typically games like have this continuation um, with d4 later. And yeah, there's, there's a lot of um, interesting variations here. Uh, this this is taking it a bit far, but it's very very sharp basically, and uh, it's thought to be overall slightly better for white, even the fried liver. But d4 is kind of an upgrade, a, a more solid version, the lolly attack. Instead of knight takes f7, just playing d4. So we have actually now knight takes d4 by Leela. Uh, if bishop b4 check, just to provoke c3 to take c3 away from white, that's interesting, but knight takes f7 could happen here with some dangers for black. Uh, for example, this kind of thing, where white might even just take h7 in this kind of situation. Uh, so it's, it's interesting, uh, knight takes d4, c3, uh, now, the idea is clearly not to move the knight back because otherwise bishop takes d5. The idea is to counter-attack white's bishop here with b5. Stockfish puts the bishop on d3. We have now h6 trying to push this knight back. Um, so, what else? If <clears throat> if knight c6, <clears throat> pardon me, bishop takes b5, this position... Uh, is going to be quite nice for white after queen a4. There's kind of damage done on c6 here. So this ends up better for white. So h6 seems fairly uh, needed. On bishop e7 here instead, because you might think, well, it's a bit committal weakening the light squares, but bishop e7, just taking here, taking on b5, taking on e5, this kind of thing is going to be a nice advantage for white. So h6 unnecessary evil but knight takes f7 king takes c takes e takes d4 so at the moment black is a pawn up but the king is a little bit shaky on f7 but how to get to the king it's interesting here that the third rank is fairly clear uh, so will that be used by white at some point for this rook <laughs> maybe uh, so that's an interesting attacking uh, thing going on. The weakened light squares in general look a bit shaky here. Uh, so let's see. White castles. We have rook b8. a4 trying to weaken light squares further. Uh, Lena re rejects pushing the pawn. Knight b4 is played. On b4, white can establish a bishop on c4. And use that pin, that pin's knight, to attack the rook here, bishop f4. And this position is going to be nice. 
uh, yeah, it looks pretty shaky. Black can't really afford things like C5. It, for example, Queen F3 looks extremely um, dangerous and, and other things. Um, but say uh, G6, Knight takes D4. White's doing very well here. Knight takes C6, undermines D5, for example. Uh, this position, great for White. Uh, so Knight B4, we have, uh, so leader returning a pawn. So five pawns each, uh, but this is an opportunity to play king g6 to make it run for it. Uh, now, this king g6, there's only one stem game I find here myself, a6. Apparently this happened in an ICCF email correspondence tournament, Busan against Tours, Torres in 2016. That game ended peacefully eventually after knight c3. It ended actually uh, in simplification around here and a draw pretty soon after. Uh, so this is like the last remaining stem game in this line. Uh, eventually drawn. Uh, let's just take it to the final position, 94, draw. Uh, so that's the last remaining stem game. So a6, but king g6 was played here by Leela. We have knight d2, bishop d6, rook e1, a6. Uh, you might think, can't the king go over here? If the king goes over there, the problem is tactically in this position, knight e4 has some serious venom to it. For example, bishop f5, knight g5 check, and the light squares are really dangerous for black's king here. For example, hg is a total disaster like this, just mating the king. Uh, so yeah, it seems as though this position is pretty scary. And if the king went back, then knight f3, taking on d4, for example, and then this rook left using that third rank is dangerous. Uh, there's all sorts of dangerous things going on here. White's getting an advantage there. So okay, a6. Um, Bishop c4, rook f8, knight f3, and leader protects that pawn. Now rook e4 is played. This looks like a a very interesting idea to, in some cases, uh, double to con you know control that e file. And in other cases, it's useful for supporting things like knight h4 check. Um, so we have queen f6 being played by Lila. On d3, then bishop d2 is best, for example, like this. And that's dangerous still, for example. Uh, so, yeah, there's no end of trouble for black here. And if king h8, that wins the exchange. Knight f7 check wins the exchange. Uh, and by the way, on bishop takes d3, that would be a bad idea. Because here, after king takes, yeah, there is actually a fork here, but king f5 secures an advantage for black. Big advantage. So uh, queen f6, we have this rook a3, so quite nifty use of the rooks. I believe stockfish feels at home here, basically. It's pretty tactical position with king safety issues. Uh, we have bishop f5 being played. On bishop d7, as an, another example, uh, check and here rook f3 is quite nifty so protecting f2 hitting the queen and for example bishop d2 this situation with knight g5 it's always it seems to be a very nice move in many variations knight g5 and this secures an advantage for white well, it's doing very nicely there uh, so we have bishop f5 now here Knight h4 check, so supported by that rook on e4. Getting the light square bishop, so the bishop pair. Queen e2 protects f2 and the rook. Now we have this nifty rook h3. d3 is played. This seems rather desperate to give up a pawn. Why would Leela give up a pawn here after all this to play d3? If we look at this position, black does seem to be in a spot upon the hair. On bishop c7, then that gives up e7. And there's a big threat with that pin pawn of things like rook takes h6. Uh, 
So say bishop f4, taking rook g3, this ends up this endgame. Uh, black's losing g7 or giving up the exchange is not very pleasant at all. So it does seem pretty dangerous this position after rook h3. On a5, there's actually rook h5 hitting the queen and rook e6. And then this kind of thing is devastating. Where, uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's actually a really dangerous position. So the, the pawn was uh, given up. Bishop takes d3, so white officially a pawn up. So not taking the queen, f2 would be given up if queen takes, queen takes f2. So, but a pawn up here, we have rook e8. And now simplification, I might think, isn't this a bit tricky to convert? It's only one pawn. The thing is, black's pawns are pretty fragmented here. And the king, yeah, has only got two pawns around it. White controls the center quite well here. Let's see what happened then. G3, we have check. Just wanting the rooks off. If the rooks don't come off, so after queen takes, queen takes. If, the, if that's not played, say rook f8, the thing is, the bishop can go to c3 here. Bishop d2, bishop c3. Very comfortable for white, indeed. Um, now here, queen c4 is, is cautious. If rook takes c5, then bishop b6, and look at f2. That's a problem. That's equality, at least. So queen c4, though, and then queen takes is much better for white. So yeah, once the bishop establishes itself, uh, establishes itself on c3, it's going to be nice. So Leela immediately uh, kind of got the rooks off. Rook d1, queen takes e4. For the moment, it doesn't look as though... Is, is it definitely that winning? So bishop e3, bishop e5. Uh, if black goes defensively instead of counterattacking this pawn, then uh, it's pretty miserable to do this kind of thing. h4, for example, queen b3, uh, and then queen b5. It's going to be much for white. Uh, this is uh, just an example continuation. White's, yeah, black doesn't want to get so passive. So uh, bishop e5, so a swaps, swap seat of pawns. Uh, we have h4, bishop f6, bishop a7, king h8. If black uh, wants to stop white playing a5, let's say a5, then that's a target, of course. And white can improve the situation making use of checks sometimes, like this, for example, and advantage for white. So uh, the pawn was kept on a6. We had king h8, a5 fixing that a6 pawn. Now bishop b6 protecting that pawn. King g2. So now there's support for queen f3 if any check. Uh, check. Queen c7 hitting the bishop, protecting the bishop. Okay, so some <laughs> high-level shuffling now. An episode of high-level shuffling. Uh, White's making some sort of progress and in fact gets in a position to challenge the queens to try and get the queens off which further simplifies White's task pretty shortly uh, around here coming up so look for a moment as if this is going to be difficult to convert but there's a moment coming up now, very soon, where white gets the queens off with queen c7. And Leela obliges, queen takes c7. If Leela doesn't oblige, say queen d3, then there's queen d8 check anyway there, taking the queens off. And if more stubborn, queen b3, then check. And this pin's nasty. Bishop d4, that's pretty nasty. Uh, here, by the way, on check, if king f7, then check, and this pin anyway, and here, uh, to sort of be able to play bishop b4, but then a6 drops. So yeah, there's some big trouble here after queen c7. The queens are coming off, simplifying white's task. The problem for black in this endgame now, with this pawn fixed, white really just wants to get the king over here to hit a6. And uh, because of the pawn majority, this is going to slow black down as well uh, to try and do something about this pawn majority. We have king f7, king g2, 
g6 so the king's taken away uh, from this side of the board a little bit king f3 uh, king f5 g4 and the king's pushed again on that side uh, so the king is very dangerous here much better king coming into b7 uh, it's very advantageous for white so we see some end game technique here at play at work so the king coming over to that queen side and uh, you might think it's the wrong color bishop as long as the king can't get into that corner it doesn't matter that it's the wrong color bishop you know for this pawn to queen so that's a very important uh, specific thing to factor in can the king actually get into the corner um, after bishop e5 it's this pawn which is dissuading stuff as well um, so we have king e6 and the game ended here uh, so both sides thought it was absolutely winning a, a possible continuation taking on a6 and then this pawn is uh, going to be queening with this kind of maneuver to bishop b6 offering f4 and then this is queening okay so uh quite uh an interesting exploration of the lolly attack in this game uh and it does seem a pretty solid alternative to the very popular uh, popular named fried liver attack which is all the rage i think people like playing the fried liver but the lolly is a nice modest safer alternative to get an advantage instead of knight takes f7 in the opening okay uh, if you enjoyed this game video then please click on the top left box which should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net play against other youtubers you can also test yourself on the variations covered in this and other game videos from the improved menu puzzle books option which also has a link to the annotated game comments questions donations see the description like share subscribe with the notification bell really appreciated thanks very much puzzle book for this game so this is a chess mold improve menu puzzle books you'll see quite a few of recent game videos here so this has 29 puzzles uh, created from the variation so white play for a clear advantage here that would have been a, a big mistake <clears throat> white's playing for a clear advantage here I think um, Bishop takes b5 and uh queen a4 nope i'll oh, just castling waiting for bishop e7 now queen a4 and uh what what's the move here rook d1 <laughs> okay clear advantage here um a takes no i've kind of forgotten this position hint rookie one right and knight d2 okay it's a bit arbitrary uh maybe no uh, bishop e4 okay we'll just do the, uh, the first five uh, let's keep this short uh here uh right in this position Knight to h4? Nope. Hint. Bishop d2. Alright, if the king stepped back, there was knight g5. And that's that's amazing. Just one more. Uh so white's play for it just just winning the exchange. Okay, um yeah, uh there's other puzzle books as well for famous players. Uh my favourites uh myself I am the Fisher book I'm working on uh, playing through myself at the moment but there's also a fantastic Mikhail Tal book Paul Morphy there's quite a few amazing ones these these are my absolute favorites to check out uh, but especially Bobby Fisher for his career I'd really recommend this uh, so I'm studying those in detail myself at the moment okay thanks very much